Hello, so we have the Coerio formula in hand. The proof was complete in previous video, but we have actually achieved a little bit more. The following result that we have proven in the middle of all the work that we did for the Coerio formula um, is quite interesting in its own right. And for reasons that I will explain is quite also independent of the Coerio formula. So let's see the result first. Uh, suppose f from Rm into Rn, m bigger than or equal to n, is Lipschitz, the same setting as in Coerio formula. Then for almost every point in the sense of Lebesgue in Rn, The pre-image, if inverse of the singleton z, is h m minus n rectifiable. Maybe, well, just to be a little bit more precise, I should say um, countably rectifiable. The terminology is not universal here. So so, and you don't need to know the definition of what countably h m minus n rectifiable is. You will figure it out from the proof. Um, so as you see, this result does not involve, even in its statement, any, uh, any reference to the area factor. To this Jacobian. So in that sense, philosophically, this result is independent of the query formula and simpler as well. You don't have to prove that delicate integral equality in order to be able to prove this one. We had this query of both where to prove the query of formula, we needed the query inequality to even take care of the null sets. We needed the um, implicit function theorem, which did the most of the job on the set where the rank of the derivative was equal to n, the maximum possible. And on the set where we had rank strictly less than n, the critical set, we had what we called a weak Sard's theorem to say that almost every fiber was insignificant. And, and also we had, we had to use area formula for equal dimensions uh, in the proof of this. So the, this theorem that you see on the screen for today requires only from this um, just weak Sard's theorem, query inequality, and the implicit function theorem. And in particular, there is no need to define the Jacobian, just to prove this theorem. So from these three uh, follows this rectifiability result of uh, fibers of this map. Okay, as you will see in a second in the proof. So in that sense, this theorem is independent and, and also simpler to prove. Part of the difficulty of the query formula was just the linear algebra behind uh, this query factor. Okay, so how does the proof of um, this rectifiability here happen? Again, we divide the analysis into two parts, basically. The part where the rank of the derivative is equal to n, the regular set, and the critical set where uh, rank is strictly less than n. So a1 is the regular set, x is where rank of the derivative of f at x is equal to n, a0 is x where rank derivative of f at x is strictly less than n 
then these are measurable measurable we always have to be careful and verify everything and rn equals a0 u and in a1 u and in n for a null set here lm null set okay because uh, there is a null set where you you don't even have a derivative your function is only Lipschitz on the rest of the set uh, the domain you do have the derivative by Rademacher's theorem so first comes Sard's theorem which we proved in a separate video the weak version and that was telling us that the integral over our n of h m minus n f inverse of z intersected with the critical set dl n c equals zero. In other words, for l n almost every z h m minus measure of the fiber the part of fiber that intersects the critical set is zero and this is good news for rectifiability because sets with measure zero can be added for free to any rectifiable set and the set is still rectifiable accountably rectifiable now by query inequality or Eilenberg's inequality, if you wish to call it, the same holds for the null set. So for ln almost every z in the target, h m minus n of f inverse of z intersected with n equals zero. So we only need to deal with the with the set A1. And there we had this lemma that the set A1, the regular set, is a countable union of measurable sets, or maybe finitely many of them only, such that on each Ki, we have uh, the implicit function theorem. The statement was was uh, only just big, so I don't want to copy it here. And I'll just draw the, the picture so you will recall definitely what was going on there. So this A1, is the set where rank is full. If your function was C1, you would get uh, the implicit function theorem on an open set, but now you, you get it only on a measurable set. And this is your original F mapping into Rn. Here is Z. The fibers get corrected by a C1 diffeomorphism. So G is C1 uh, with a C1 inverse. And the, this G, what it does is it simultaneously irons out all the preimages. So if this is preimage Z in the new coordinate system, that just becomes contained in this. So if you take another one, W, the preimage may look like this. It may even be broken. It doesn't have to be smooth. Uh, actually, it does because it will be image of, just on this part it is, but maybe outside anything can happen. But uh, just the part that intersects K, the fibers become vertical. Uh, maybe in some part this becomes disconnected. So like this too comes from one. Here also uh, remember that the set is only measurable. So maybe this is, not part of my open set. So K is outside here. Okay, 
just a rough picture, of course. But, but what is the consequence of this? The consequence is that the part of F inverse Z intersected with K, um, so for each I, this set, this is uh, the, the blue pre-images in the original domain, but these become images under C1 maps. Here, this will be uh, G inverse of um, subsets of R m minus n. So in this new coordinate system, here is R n, and here is the remaining coordinates, R m minus n. So every vertical fiber, vertical line, is a copy of R m minus n, which we can identify canonically. So every blue in the original domain, this thing here, is the image under G inverse of a subset of R m minus n. Uh, we can, in this uh, decomposition of A1, require that Ki's are disjoint. We can always um, begin with K1, from K2 remove K1, from K3 remove whatever has already been covered, and inductively you can make these Ki's disjoint. Uh, for the definition of uh, rectifiability, you don't really need to define the maps on um, measurable sets, if you, even if you did, you could um, assume that these Ki's are compact sets at the cost of ignoring another null set. But that null set, again, will be taken care of by the coherent equality. These are all um, technicalities. But anyway, the message is the set A1, so this was just one of the Ki's, uh, but A1 is covered by many other Ks, and in each one of them, each fiber is a C1 image of some subset of Rm minus 1. So for this one, there is a new coordinate system which corrects the fibers, so every single one is like that. So you keep doing this, so what we end up then is what we end up with is that F inverse of Z intersection with all of A1 is union of countably many, because we only have countably many Ki's, countably many images of Um, C1 maps defined on subsets of Rm minus n. Now add it to the previous analysis that we had. Um, so this was for every z because of the picture, but now we have to say for almost every Z, because our previous analysis just covered almost every Z. F inverse of Z, intersection with Rm, so all of this set, is union of countably many images of C1 maps, plus some set with h m minus n measure zero. That comes from our previous analysis. Suppose z is, is in one of those sets, um, in one of those points whose pre-image does intersect this critical set or this null set, but only on a negligible h m minus n negligible part, but it's still, but it is still there. So 
here will be a picture of roughly what, what is happening here. So for some z, the pre-image will have some countably many nice parts, but then there will be also bad parts, but those bad parts uh, only have h m minus n measure equal to zero. And as we have seen before in the animated pictures that I had, for certain z's, this is only for almost every z, in, you could have w whose pre-image is not even in the right dimension. It could have some open set, which now is m-dimensional. Imagine like f being constant on this part of the set. But, but because of this theorem, uh, we know that such w's are only uh, a negligible part of the range. Okay, so that's the best picture of um, HM minus N zero sets that I can draw. Um, this brings us to the end of the proof, by the way. Um, I wanna just emphasize that in general, we cannot claim more we had this example of, so there, let me give you some examples to convince you of this, x, y equal absolute value of x plus absolute value of y. This thing is Lipschitz and every single fiber, that means for every, uh, almost every actually point in R, so this f is going from R2 into R, the pre-image is one rect H1 rectifiable, but it's not a manifold ever because the pre-image is actually uh, this diamond and uh, we have these corners where it fails to be a manifold. Uh, the exceptional point is the value zero whose pre-image is not the diamond this zero dimensional thing in this case we we see that a pre-image is again h1 rectifiable but for for um, silly reasons it's just one point and it has h1 measure zero also we saw in the example of f of x equal absolute value of x2 where f goes from r n into r is c infinity but f inverse of z is not a manifold i mean n manifold n minus one manifold for um, a particular point in the image which is again zero at every other value the pre-images are the, the spheres of course and these are beautiful manifolds, but that's zero still. So the claim even for C infinity is not true for every single Z in the domain, for almost every Z. And that follows from the regular Sard theorem. So the Sard theorem, uh, if you have more regularity for F, uh, but so the, so the pre-images of most points are manifolds, are not just rectifiable sets which are close to being manifolds they are honest manifolds however even in that case you can claim this for almost every point in the image and not every single point there okay so but but that is an uh, the last example i wanted to give you uh, this theorem was proved today and it is a theorem of interest independent of whether you are interested in query formula or not. Um, okay, that's it for today. Thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't yet. That is very important on my end. And uh, please comment any questions that you may have. We will have some more fun with this query formula before moving on to our next exciting project. Thank you a lot.